My name is Doug Zweig. I am a interventional pulmonologist at Christian Hospital Northeast, a member of the BJC healthcare system. We're today at Christian Hospital Northeast endoscopy suite. We are preparing to perform what is termed an EBUS bronchoscopy. It's a relative new form of endoscopic procedures where a flexible fiber optic bronchoscope allows visualization of the airway and then transillumination on the other side to see structures hidden behind the wall of the airway itself. Our patient is 44 years of age, female, non-smoker, who was referred to us for some shortness of breath that she experienced ascending a stairwell. A chest x-ray was taken and demonstrated a right suprahyalar mass, which was confirmed by CT imaging. And collectively, our team has decided that the EBUS technique is perhaps the best way to sample the structure in the least invasive manner. As you see here, the chest x-ray again demonstrates a right suprahyalar structure on the right side also seen in the lateral projection and on CT imaging to the right of the screen we see the structure again in front of the takeoff of her right upper lobe it is situated literally just below the azagous vein and above the right pulmonary artery so we have a narrow window to try to sample this structure and we will come over the top of the right pulmonary artery into the soft tissue density in hopes of establishing the cell type that we're dealing with in this particular mass. Okay, this will not be an EBUS. Oh, wow. See that? I've got an endobronchial tumor coming out of an anterior segment of her upper lobe. I can't justify trying to go in between two vessels when I can see them right there in my, air, in my airway. So um, the bronchoscope at this point in time is looking down the barrel of the trachea and at the top of the screen is the right main stem bronchus. Obviously to the bottom would be the left main stem bronchus and our CT images showed an area in the right uh, upper lobe. We've already inspected the airways and they're pretty much clear with the exception of a finding here as we come into the right main stem, flex up into the right upper lobe, and come into the anterior segment, we have an endobronchial um, lesion coming back down. And it has kind of a pearly uh, discoloration to it. Uh, and our plan is to uh, lightly biopsy this site and then wait for the histology to come back and hopefully identify the, uh, the type of growth and tumor that we're, de we're dealing with and then give us certain types of uh, interventional procedures that will allow us to rectify this problem. At this point in time, we're passing the uh, bronchial forceps, endobronchial forceps down the working channel. And as you'll see on the monitor in just a second, the probe will come out and will open. And there is a blood vessel there. I'm going to try to get around biopsy. Open. open and the specimens themselves are pretty small but underneath the microscope they look like football fields so what we have to do is come back in the scope we try to take at least uh, you know three or four specimens this again has a little vessel at the end so I'm going to try my best to stay away from that um, we expect a little bit of bleeding, which is of no consequence. Open. Open. Biopsy. Biopsy. Open. Open. Thank you. Close. And as we suck back, we'll collect the cells from the area into a trap, which will be taken downstairs. And they will spin the specimen down to make a cell block. And then expect that as well for any cells that may not originate from this airway on a normal basis. Next step is actually to wait for the pathologist to tell me the histology that we're dealing with. And then um, at this point in time, with what we know regarding her PET scan uh, and the CT imaging, uh, it's most likely that we'll proceed with a thoracotomy to remove the right upper lobe and try to preserve the right middle and lower lobe. Uh, but it really comes down to what the histology is. There's a good chance this could be a benign tumor. Um, there's a, a tumor called a carcinoid that will kind of give this pearly appearance. 
on a film and generally does not cause a lot of systemic symptoms, which she did not manifest as well. So my hope is that if it's going to be a tumor, that it's a benign tumor, possibly a carcinoid, that with surgical resection, uh, it's a thing of the past.